I know we talked earlier about uh, you're pretty confident there was no political bias in the opening of the investigation with Bill Priestap. Yeah, we did not find evidence, and as to him, um, it, we knew who made the decision. We could focus specifically on him. But you definitely, in both of these investigations, you found political bias. We found, through the text messages, evidence of people's political bias, correct. Also, political motivation. For example, Bruce Ord talked about how uh, Christopher Steele was desperate. Of the application, yet we now know that in October and then three times late, October 2016 and three times in 2017, these individuals deliberately, knowingly misled the FISA court. I mean, that's really the nicest way to put it. Basically, they lied to the FISA court to get a surveillance warrant of an American citizen. Why would they do, why would so many people do that? So um, we, uh, we lay out here the reasons, as I said, there are multiple teams there are some more senior people, more junior people. I, we're, we obviously try very carefully to lay out who knew what when and which people. So I want to be careful and not. Were they just all incompetent? I mean, all of, all of these people, were they just, they just couldn't, uh, they, they didn't know. I mean, they were competent enough to deliberately mislead the FISA court, to change submissions to the FISA court, to alter emails. I mean, so that doesn't sound like they're very stupid to me. But, I mean, what, what's the explanation? Why over time, why would, why would all of these people four times over the space of half a year deliberately mislead a federal court? So um, we ultimately make, we don't make a conclusion as to the intent here. So I um, want to be clear about that. Um, but that was precisely the concern we had, is what you lay out. There are so many errors. Um, we couldn't reach a conclusion or make a determination on what motivated those failures other than we did not credit what we lay out here were the explanations we got. Yeah, so it certainly wasn't the reasons that they offered you it was, is what you're, we didn't is what you're saying. That. And frankly, this is one of the reasons we didn't, weren't able to, but didn't reach a conclusion is we now have the court weighing in and the court wanting to understand what happened here as well. Yeah, so it, it, the, I think the scope here is what really alarms me. The, the number of people involved, at the, directly involved at the FBI, the repeated decisions to mislead, outright lie to the FISA court, and uh, the, the total uh, implausibility of the explanations that these people offered you. I mean, again, m maybe they're incompetent uh, or maybe they had an agenda here. And I just want to put a fine point on that. It, was it your conclusion that there was uh, that political bias uh, did not affect any part of uh, the, uh, the page investigation, any part of Crossfire Hurricane? Is that what we you concluded? Not. Reach because that I, I could have sworn, in fact, I know for a fact that I've heard that today from this committee, but that's, that's not your conclusion? We've, we have been very careful with in connection with the FISAs for the reasons you mentioned to, to not reach that conclusion, in part, as we've talked about earlier, the alteration of the email, um, the text messages associated with the individual who did that, um, and our, our inability to explain or understand what to get good explanations so that we could understand why this all happened. I think we're left with, with really, I mean, it's two, two possibilities here. You have three d different investigative teams, as you testified earlier. You've got a dozen people at the FBI. You've got the decisions made over time to mislead the FISA court. Either these people were really incompetent and bad at their jobs, or they had an agenda that they were pursuing. And uh, having an agenda... I don't care what word you put in front of it, political agenda, personal agenda, but whatever it is, it is antithetical to democracy.